We've now talked about the multiplication rule in combinatorics. Now we're going to talk about the addition rule. So you multiply, just a recall, you multiply things together if you have independent steps. So for example, if we were trying to pick a pin number, pin number um, of length five, five from 36 alphanumeric um, characters, right? the letters A through Z and the numbers 1 through 9. With repetition allowed, right, we've got five spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's 36 ways to do each spot, and all of these spots are independent. Meaning it doesn't matter what I chose for the first spot. I can choose anything I want for the second spot. There's no dependence. So this is going to be 36 to the fifth power. Um, and without repetition, this is going to be, again, we still have five spots. But now... It, uh, again, it doesn't matter which digit I chose for the first one, but my pool of numbers is now limited, is now shrunk by one. 35, so now we have permutations. Um, excuse me, not uh, our permutation. Which is going to equal uh, 36 factorial over 36 minus 5 factorial. And I'm not going to solve these, but again, the reason we could do this, the multiplication rule, is because these did not depend, each, they're sort of independent steps. It doesn't matter how I do one step, I can do the next step my own total way. I don't have to look back, I don't have to have a memory. So, this is a little different when we use the addition rule. So, in this problem, we're going to create a password with 5, 6, or seven alphanumeric characters. So now these are, you can think of this as a series of steps. Like you could write an algorithm to solve this, right? Figure out how many passwords have five digits, how many passwords have six digits, and how many passwords have seven digits. And then would you multiply those together? No, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You would, in fact, you would add these together because, um, it's sort of it's one or the other. Not all of them are happening, and that's the difference. This is this is an or instead of an and. So we're not doing a whole bunch of this and this and this and this, which is when multiplication is involved. In this, we can think of we're going to do this or this or this. Now you have to be careful because in the future we're also going to talk about uh, an algorithmic process but in that case, you have to do and. You do this step and this step and this step. So really, you can think of or as being addition and and being multiplication, which is why any of you who have taken a circuits class, um, that's often the symbol they use for these because that's really the way it, it works in a lot of the time. So here we want to figure out how many passwords of length five there are? And then we're going to add that value to how many passwords of length six there are. And then we're going to add that to how many of length seven there are. And this is again because we're not going to choose a password from each category, but because we will choose a password of length five or six or seven. And those ors are important. So let's do it. Now notice there's no repetition allowed. So the passwords 
of length five, there are going to be, there's 36 to the fifth, right? Which if you work this out, this is, actually let me do this in a different color. 35 to the sixth, which works out to 60 million, four, six, six thousand, 176. And if we have passwords of length six, this is gonna be 35 to the six, which is gonna work out to two million, excuse me, two billion, 176 million, 782,000, and 336. Um, notice just adding that one more digit made the number of passwords go up dramatically. In fact, exponentially. And finally, of length seven, we're gonna have 35 to the seven, which works out to an even bigger number, which is 78 billion, 364 million, 164,000, and 96. So if we add all of these up, we're gonna get that there are 80 billion, 612, excuse me, 80 billion, 601 million, 412,000, and 608. But this is interesting to note, this is why a lot of places, especially where your password needs to be secure for a bank or even for um, school passwords often, they want more digits. I know here at Glendale Community College, we're supposed to have 10 digits. So you can work out how many t how many different options there are. The, mo the more digits, the more ways there are of doing it, and the slower it is for somebody to crack it if they're just doing going through each number at a time. Okay, and notice that this um, the smallest one. Oh, and I I wrote that wrong. This should have been thirty five to the five. I apologize. Um, this is really very small compared to these other numbers. So it is a lot less secure um, than the six or than the seven digit or even the six digit number. Okay, so the official rule, if we have a finite set A, which is equal to the union of K distinct mutually disjoint subsets. Um, so a way of looking at this is we have a, this is the sum total of A, remember your set theory, and we break this into K parts. So here's A of one, there's A of two, there's A of three, A of four, dot, 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 A of K, right? So we don't know how many K is, right? These are distinct mutually disjoint subsets. Um, then, The size of A is equal to the size of A1 plus the size of A2 plus all the way up to the size of A of K, right? In other words, this is a partition of A. So that's sort of what we're saying here. This is the addition rule. If these are all of our possible passwords, so for example, if we have passwords of length five, six, or seven, and we wanna know how many there are, well, we need to just add them up to figure out the total value.